Hello, ACCA performance management people. My name is Steve Willis. Today we are looking at decision making under risk and uncertainty. We will use the past exam question, an oldie but a goodie, question cement, to unpack the whole decision making under risk and uncertainty toolbox. We will look at expected values, value of perfect information, maxi max, maxi min, and the mini max regret decision rules. If you find this video helpful, please throw down a like and hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Guys, let's get started. Here's the question we're going to do today. Question cement. Now, you cannot find this in the practice platform. It ain't in there, but it is in most of the published revision kits question banks, so you can find it in your study materials. If you don't happen to have it, check the link below and you can get this PDF. Now, we see a company that is trying to make a decision about a production volume. We have uncertainty of the weather, okay? The question asks us for a payoff table. I want you to try this on your own. The question asks you to help make a decision based on maxi min. Let's do maxi max, maxi min, mini max regret. Look at this, we have some probabilities. So we'll also do expected values, and then the value of perfect information. So friends, you're gonna pause the video now, you're gonna crack open the practice platform and a blank practice workspace. Give this a try and then come back and let's compare our work and check out spreadsheet exam technique. Welcome back. You've given question cement a go. Let me show you how I would do it and I'm in the practice platform in a blank workspace with the PDF opened on another screen, okay? You've given it a try. And we're looking for a payout table. To give the markers a payout table, I like to do it first in a profit table form, especially working in spreadsheet because we can really be efficient by copying formulas, okay? It's a bit more work to do it in the payout table format, and I'll show you that in a second. So I've got to figure out how to make my table, and the first thing I've got to think about is my decision, right? That's the production volume. So column B is gonna be my production, and I'm gonna set column C then to the uncertainty, right? And that's the demand. We're looking for a profit. Profit is the difference between the revenue and some costs. And we get a price, and a price multiplied by our activity level will give us a sales. Let me make a note that this is $9 up here, at the top of the column. Now we have costs of $4 per unit, okay? Those are variable costs based on the amount that we produce. No fixed costs in the story, simple version of this problem. Now, here we have a conditional cost, right? If the production is greater than the demand, we have to pay a truck, we have to haul the unused cement away because it is perishable, it has a shelf life. If you didn't know that, a bag of cement, it gets hard over time and it's no good after some months. So here we will have a disposal cost of five cents, okay? There we go. And if we subtract the costs from the profit, from the, from the sales, we will get profit. All right, now let me just grab all of this. And if I right click on one column separator, it will auto enlarge to the right, to the right width, column width. Okay, let me set my column headings bold, just easier on the eye. Everyone knows what we're doing. Okay, control B makes it bold. Now, we have three decisions and three weather states. Three times three is nine. So I'm gonna have nine rows in my profit table. 
Okay, so I can do 200,000 units. Let's tell the marketing team we're working in thousands. Okay, being professional, showing our precision, and that becomes more important as you get into the professional exams. Get in the habit of being professional now with your presentation of spreadsheets. Okay, and demand guys can be low, medium, or high. 200, 280, or 350. And we could produce 280, and I'm gonna drop down three cells, and we could do 350. You see where this is going, guys? I'm gonna be really efficient, grabbing ranges of cells, control C, control V for view, for paste. Boom, look at that, saving time. Now I grab the 200, I grab that little bit in the bottom right and just drag it down. Look at this, moving quickly. I used to teach this question on the whiteboard. Oof, it was laborious, it took a long time. Now it's a delight in the spreadsheet. What a great move, moving to spreadsheet. Thank you, ACCA. Okay, now check this out. This is a little tricky. How many units will we sell? Well, if we produce 200 and the demand is 200, we sell 200. If we produce 200 and the demand is 280, we produce the lower figure. We can't sell more than we produce. Same thing here. If we produce 280 and the demand is 200, we sell the lower of those two figures. Guys, you could do it old school. If you are afraid of spreadsheets, right, you could go through here and just kind of pick the lower of the two numbers, but I'm going to save time. I'm gonna use one function, and this is a function I suggest you use in this case. That is the minimum function. You just type three letters, M-I-N, you open a bracket for a range, you grab that range, boom. You get the lower, the lowest figure, the lower of the two or the lowest of the range. I drag that down, check that out. It picks out the smallest of the two numbers, saving oodles of time. I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna multiply that by $9, nine. I'm gonna drag that down to copy that equation all the way down. I'm using relative cell addresses not locking things in with a dollar sign, so it works great. Now, the costs are based on my production. I'm, I'm, I'm setting my production schedule early and I'm committing to these costs. So I'm gonna make, if I produce 200, I'm gonna get the cost of 800. So I'm gonna multiply then the negative four using a negative, so it's a cost, and I can sum everything up quickly. Multiply by production. Now, copy that down. And look at that, wonderful. All right, now, here is a conditional situation. We only pay the disposal if the production is greater than the demand. And if you are a spreadsheet rock star, you could use, of course, the if conditional function. However, a difference between the practice platform, the exam system itself, and Microsoft Excel, you don't get all of that helper information. When you do this equation in Excel, it starts popping up little windows. Oh, this is how you, you use the, the function. This is what you need to put here, here, and here. You don't get that. So at this point, we're gonna just do it in a more simple way. I'm just gonna look through here and find where production is greater than sales, okay? Now, if I wanted to, I could do it like this. Check this out. Equals production minus demand. If the number is greater than zero, then that's the situation. So I can just grab that down and look at this, I'm just gonna delete anything, okay, that is not a positive number greater than zero. Now, I know what you're thinking, Steve, that's not appropriate spreadsheet technique. At work, we don't do it that way. Guys, there are no marks for financial modeling 
in your ACCA exams, there are no marks for spreadsheet skills. So you got to get through things quickly. This is the quickest way to do it. But let's just go back in here. And now we need to multiply that. Well, if we're going to mix subtraction and multiplication, we got to use some parentheses to preserve order of operations. I multiply that by a negative 0 0.5. There we go. Copy, paste, paste using control C, control V, getting those right into the spots where they belong. Guys, the profit will now be the sum of this range of cells from revenue, from sales to my total disposal costs. Copy that down. That's a little bit crunched to me. I'm going to just make that a little bit wider. Friends, that is a profit table. If they were just asking us to find maxi max, I could pick the biggest number off of here and give that to the marketing team, right? That would be 1750 produce 350. But friends, I'm going to show you more. Let's do expected values and the value of perfect information. All right, if we're doing expected values, we need some probability of the weather, right? So let's go back to the question. And now we need to just bring that out, okay? And let's make a column for that. And probability of weather. Double click, auto enlarge it, and we know that bad weather has a 30% ch chance of happening, 0 0.3. Medium weather, 45%, so 0 0.45. And good weather would be the 0.25. Okay, now let's save some time. Copy, paste, paste. Okay, now if we do profit, multiplied by the probability of each weather state, that would be equal to G times H. That's equal to the G3 profit multiplied by the probability of the bad weather. We're using relative cell addresses, so we can bring all of this down like this. Super cool. And expected value then would be the weighted average, right? The total of the profit times the probability for each product. So I can make a nice big column here, expected value, and if using relative cell addresses, if I grab, if I go to the middle here and I do the sum function, I'm gonna grab these, three for producing 200. Guys, if that equals 1,000, that is a proof of concept because if we multiply 1,000 by any batch of probabilities, if those probabilities equal 100%, it's going to be 1,000, and it is. Formula good. Copy paste that into the same position for each. Okay. And if we were to use the expected value rule, we would produce 280. Okay, right there. So we would indicate that to the marking team. Um, if they were asking us for EV, we could even just come down here and make a little table, expected value, choose 280. All right, now let me show you the value of perfect information, right? I'm gonna move over here. Value of perfect information. Imagine we could purchase a magical weather report that would tell us 100% certainty, with 100% certainty, what the weather's going to be. How much would we pay for that magical report? That is the value of perfect information. And I need two figures to do that. The first one is that I need the expected value of um, the decisions with perfect info, then the expected value without perfect info, and the difference would be the value of 
perfect information. Okay, let me auto enlarge those. Now, let me show you what I do. If, I'm gonna zip back and forth between the parts of the spreadsheet, okay? So look at this, I'm gonna come back over here. If we knew the weather was gonna be good, right? We would choose 350, we would choose 1750 as our profit because we knew the weather would be good and there would be a 25% chance of us making that decision. So that would be 0 0.25 times 1750, okay? Now, if we knew beforehand that the weather was gonna be medium, we would prefer to make the 1400 profit and there would be a 45% chance of us doing that, okay? And if we knew the weather was poor, we would do 200 and earn the 1000, okay? So watch what I do. I'm just gonna come back over here. Let me just grab these probabilities. Copy. And I'll just do this right below here, okay? I can put a probability column. There we go. Let me just move that down one more little bit just to make it clearer for this demonstration. That's the probability, okay? Now, profit at this weather state. I'm just gonna retype those instead of dancing back and forth, okay? So, and this was poor weather, medium weather, good weather, and we can do the profit here. Now, remember, this is the profit that we would get if we knew with 100% certainty the weather beforehand profit. So that's going to be equal. I'm just going to grab those numbers and type them in by hand instead of zipping back and forth doing the, the, the linking to the cells. Okay. So that's going to be equal to the 1750 from over there. Medium, we say we would get 1400 and poor weather, we'd get a thousand. Okay. So now if we did profit multiplied by the probability, that'll be equal to 30% multiplied by 1,000, copy, paste, paste, and then the sum there would be the expected value, okay, of our profits with perfect information. And I can now plug that figure, let's put a little underline there so the user of this can see that's a total value with perfect information, that's equal to this, Guys, if we didn't have perfect information, we would then earn the, the, the expected value would be that 1172 from before. That was the figure in cell J7. So that's equal to cell J7. Look at that, I'm just gonna grab that cell. The value of perfect information then is the difference between those. That's equal to the P3 minus the P4. So we would pay up to $195.50 for that magical theoretical weather report. That's the value of perfect information. Let's now use the decision-making rules under risk and uncertainty to help a risk seeker to help the risk averse decision maker and then the sore loser make their decisions. Okay, assuming we didn't have probability and we weren't risk neutral. Now, here I would do what the question is asking. I'm gonna make the payout table and I'm just gonna make a little reference to the marker payout table. When they ask for this, it's just the profit table presented three dimension, uh, two dimensionally. So three dimensional, that would be mind blowing. Now, so the payout table, we're gonna have the weather states and we can have poor, average or good. And I can des decide to produce 200, 280 or 350. 
Friends, there's no copy paste transposed. So it's just easier to retype the figures from the table above, right? We have 1,000 for each. Okay, 280 is the 640 and the 1400 twice. And then we have 325. 181085 and then 1750. Okay, now maxi max, maxi min, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The maxi max rule would be for the risk seeker. Maximize the maximum profit, right? Ignoring the downside of risk. And this person would choose to earn a profit of. 1750. I'm going to flag that yellow. There would be no marks for this. Don't you don't got to get you don't have to get into this in the exam. This is only for our teaching point of view here, okay? So the risk seeker would choose the 350 uh, production volume in order to maximize their maximum profit. Okay? Now the risk averse decision maker they are the most cautious now they're going to assume worst case scenario worst case case scenario would be poor weather they're going to ignore the upside of risk and if the weather were poor they would want to earn okay 1000 so the risk averse decision maker would produce the 200000 okay again the formatting doesn't get you marks skip the formatting in your exam that might actually just clutter up your answer just for our demonstration, okay? Maximize the minimum profit, maxi min, and they would produce 200, okay? Now, guys, minimax regret. That's the decision rule for the sore loser. This person doesn't care about profit. This person cares about opportunity cost. This is the person who doesn't want to look bad from making the wrong decision. This is the person who's at Las Vegas gambling and they don't want to look bad by losing a lot of money. All right. So uh, from making the wrong choice. Therefore, I'm just going to grab this payout table. Watch this. Grab it. Copy. Paste. I'm going to rename it a regret table. Okay. And let's get rid of the color. Let's get rid of the figures. What we want to do now, we want to go down each weather state. Let me clear all of these out of here. One second. So check this out. I'm looking at my different weather states and I say to myself, if I choose to produce 200 units and the weather is bad, whew, I wouldn't lose any money, right? That's the best decision. People around me would say, hmm, good choice. You didn't lose any money. Now, if I chose to produce 280 and the weather turned out poor, I would earn 640. People around me would say, oh, you should have chosen 200. You would have earned 1,000. So you lost 360 from your decision. Yeah, I don't want people to say that, right? That's that's the opportunity cost of choosing the wrong course of action. And then if I were to choose 350, they would say, oh, you lost 675, right? So look at this. I come to the regret table and the best option in the poor would be 200. No regret. Here it was equal to 1000 minus 640. We can just we've got a spreadsheet right here. And the next one is equal to the 1,000 minus the 325. Do the same thing here. If the weather came out to be average, the best choice would be equal, would we be choosing 280. And we'd say, good thing we chose 280. We didn't lose any money from the bad from a bad decision. Now, if we chose 350 and the weather were average, People would look at us and say, oops, bad choice. You could have earned 1400 You only earned 1085 So 
don't want that false format. Let's put that back to a general format. Not sure why that happened. Hmm. Ah, there's an extra equal sign in there. Should have been a minus and it's giving me, okay, that Boolean return. And last but not least, that'll be 400, okay? That's how it works. So over here, zero, 350, and the biggest regret would be 750. Now, what we wanna do is look at each decision. What's the biggest opportunity cost we could have? Well, if we choose to produce 200, right, we'd be missing out on 750 if the weather were good. If we chose 280, we would be missing out on 360 if the weather was average, and over here, 675. Guys, the name of this rule is minimize the maximum regret. So if I want to minimize my regret or my opportunity costs, I would choose this one. Mini, max, regret. We're doing it this way, right? Sore loser. Minimize the maximum regret. And that would be, okay, choose 280 as my production volume. Friends, there you go. There is a decision-making under risk and uncertainty workout. Hope you found that useful. Good luck on your upcoming exam. If you found this helpful, again, please feel free to throw down a like and subscribe for more videos. This is Steve signing out for now.